uh, we hope everything is going well in your own personal life. Uh, God, we looked at these seven things that God, six things that God hid and seven is an abomination. Yeah. Uh, last week, I think we looked at the, uh, the mind. Um, not the imagination. But whether well or not, the, from 16 through 19 of chapter, uh, Proverbs chapter 16, I want to gear in on, chap on verse 20 because it deals with God's will and with your will and my will. <clears throat> and I think that the will has a tremendous effect on our decision making. And whether they, we're going to do a particular thing or not, the will has to be the primary mover in that particular situation. If you're going to do something, and you may, it may be in your mind, it may be in your heart, it may be in your emotion, but the ultimate start up or, or, get, it, or get it going is the will. I was thinking like this morning, and I was uh, asking Jesus about it, help me to get it in plain English. It's like when you crank your car, the motor's running, and the heat is on, and your radio may be on, and you're sitting there in your car, but your car is not going to move. Everything is functioning properly. But it won't function till you put it in gear, yeah. and then it moves. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking about that's the way the wheel works in uh, some right. way. You got everything before you, and but you're not touching anything. And you want to touch this, you want to touch that, you want to do this, you want to do that. But somewhere in all that doing, the wheel has to be the initiator. Go ahead, mm -hmm. or don't do that, or do, or do this, or don't do that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think the wheel is uh, as far as we are looking at man's will. Father, in Jesus' name, help us. Yes, Lord. Help us to see yes. will. Your will and man's will. Yes, we thank you again in Jesus' name. Now, in the Garden of Eden, we saw two wills working there. When Satan approached Eve, she, had, she could obey or not obey. She could consent to eat or not eat. Then when she... Uh, approached uh, Adam, he could have uh, not partook of the food or pushed it aside. The will has a lot to do with what you do or don't do. Um, no one can make you do anything unless you're willing to do it. Even if you came and, and stopped, or God stopped you on the streets, I'm going to blow your brains out if you don't give me your wallet. Well, you have two choices here. You can either give me your wallet which is against your will, mm -hmm. or you can have him blow your brains out, which also is against your will. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 w I wouldn't want to be in a situation like that, but perhaps maybe some of us have been caught in something similar, mm -hmm. that you have to make a decision, and your will has to be the initiator. Or the, that other thing could be initiator, mm -hmm. but your will, your will has to be the final authority on what you do or don't do. Amen. Can you understand that? Amen. Now, here... Uh, Solomon speaks about a number of things that uh, God hates. Mm -hmm. And one is an abomination. Mm -hmm. Let's read through this quickly, then I want to go to the will. Because the will isn't mentioned here. But we see in verse 20, the will is mentioned. Look here. Six, these six things do God, the Lord God, <clears throat> hate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yea, seven or an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying, a lying tongue, which I think that, I hope that most of us have ceased to practice. Uh, hands that shed innocent blood. <clears throat> a heart devises wicked imagination. Feet that are swift in running to what? Mischief and false witness and what a false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth gets called among the brethren and we may look at that 
perhaps one day soon. But here has to do with the will. Now, verse 20, Paul addresses to his son, your will have to be a paramount working condition here. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of his mother. Your will has to be in prime control here. My dad used to don't 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 go over there. It's not it's not nice over there. Or don't or put don't put that down. You're gonna hurt yourself. I'm thinking it's all right because I'm having it in my hand and it can't hurt me. But he gave me the best advice not to go certain places, not to do certain things, and don't hang with certain individuals, and don't be drinking and smoking and chewing and dipping. Because you, once you get involved with that, uh, the whole world of uh, decay opens up to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to decide then whether or not you're going to engage in it. Yeah. And that has to do with your what? Will. Your will. Amen. Uh, I think Jesus in the book of Luke, I, I can't remember the very chapter, but Jesus, not my will, not my will be done, but thine will be done. So Amen. there is a divine will, yes, and there is a human will. Mm -hmm. Amen. And there's another will, it's the will of the satanic one. Mm -hmm. And the thing about the satanic will, it can maneuver so cleverly that you may even confuse it as being God's will or your will. Because the flesh is, is vulnerable here. Mm -hmm. You think it's what God has said, but God has not said it. If we go back to the book of uh, Matthew as uh, J. Earl read for this morning, you're going to see how Satan actually addressed God's son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The fourth chapter of the book of um, Matthew. Before we go there, let's look at something I we see. I got up uh, what got questions not all. And said, <clears throat> if free will means that God gives humans the ability to make choices that genuinely affect their destiny, then humans do have free will. Now, do you agree with me that every human being has free will? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, but you're right. Mm -hmm. your, your, your will could be in bondage mm -hmm. to the satanic principle. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But that is absolutely true. true. There, are two, there are three wills. Man's will, the satanic will, and God's will. <clears throat> they, all, they, they don't line up all the time. Right? Because if you, if you, you can one day be doing some things that are good, and hopefully they are God's things that you want being done. Next day you're doing things that are good or your, th your things that are good. I think that's good, but it could be very well not anything of God, but of your own things that you have in your heart. You want to do stuff for somebody, right? Mm -hmm. What is the reason that you're doing it? Mm -hmm. well, it's true. That's, that's, you, you want, I'm going to be nice, mm -hmm. but behind that niceness, mm -hmm. What's the reason? Uh, it's true. You got to think about things like that. I do all the time. And sometimes I actually find myself doing things or saying things that have nothing to do with, 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 with God. has to do with what I want, what I see, what I perceive, how I can benefit from something I've said or done. You see what I'm saying? So it's very, very, very careful when we talk about your will. God's will and, uh, and, and the devil's will. His will is to destroy, to kill and destroy. God's will is to bring life. To who? To me. And show me how to walk in his way. Mm -hmm. But I have these, this one nature that is prone to do what? Evil. But once Christ comes into my life, I have a dual nature. The dual nature is that of the spirit and that of the human spirit. A human soul. So why I have to make a choice on who I'm going to obey. Well, yeah. That's why it needs to study, to show yourself approved, so you can rightly divide the word of God. So when something comes to you, you can make the right choice 
and allow your will to pursue it. But if something has come and you don't, and you, you, you're really not questioning it, you don't, you don't really don't, don't understand where it came from, actually you don't even think about where it came from, you just go ahead and do it. And you find out a lot, a lot of times you wind up doing things that are, that, that going you reap what you sow. Amen. 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 It comes out of the system. Now, human re human uh, uh, will the the time that uh, Ruth, you remember Ruth and Naomi? Yeah. In the Old Testament. Yeah. Uh, she made a decision to follow Naomi back to the land of Judah. That to, to, to her God said. Your God, I'm going to serve your God. See, uh, Ruth was actually a, a, a uh, Moabite, but she made a decision, her will, to trust the uh, Naomi's God. And uh, another one was uh, the lady in the in Jericho had let down this little law. Uh, what name was that? She had the uh, the soldiers came in and they took him in. Uh, Rahab, Rahab, and you know Rahab actually was David's grandma. When you do a research on the birthright, they, and uh, from the, actually David' father was Jesse, which was Ruth's son. I mean, uh, yeah, Ruth's son. So there's yeah, so a lot of stuff that goes on there. It has to do a lot with your will. Your will. Suppose you get up in the morning and decide to do something, and it stays with you all day. You don't do it, it stays with you all day. You even go to bed, it stays with you, so you haven't done it. So your will haven't, haven't encouraged you are, are locked into when you do something. Now, some things that come out of natural, you know, I get up in the morning, I go to the bathroom, I brush my teeth, I wash my face, put a lotion on my hand, whatever I gotta do, and I don't really think about it, that's natural. Mm -hmm. But then there's some things you have to think about. Say, well, well, should I go this way or that way? Mm -hmm. And sometimes just putting your clothes on really doesn't take a lot of thinking. Because mm -hmm. most of us have clothes everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we just, I, at night, this is what I do mm -hmm. myself. And I pick out what I'm gonna put on the next day. Mm -hmm. I bring it in the room, mm -hmm. my shoes, my socks, whatever, so when I get up, I don't have to think about what I'm going to wear. I already know what I'm wearing because I thought about it last night. Mm -hmm. So I walk in the room and put everything on because I didn't have to think about it. I have to say, oh, no, no, I do that at night. That's what I teach Jay. Do this at night. Then the next morning, it's a smooth morning. You have to stand around looking at your clothes and what the, wasting all that time looking and deciding when you should have went that night and took it all out. That's what I'm saying. And that goes with everything. Man's will. <clears throat> now, let's take a look at. Uh, can you all hold up with that? Will. <clears throat> Some things just just natural. If someone swings at you, mm -hmm. you don't have to engage your will. You throw up your arm. Because if you're going to engage your will to whether or not I throw up my arm or not, you can get busted in the face. Mm -hmm. So what you should do is, I mean, it's a natural response to something that happens. You throw your arm up. Right? Yep. Or if you're going to go in a curve in your car, you grab something to hold. Your will has nothing to do with that. That's your response to something that's happening. It's a reaction. A fly comes across your face and you, you're fanning. Your will doesn't have anything to do with that. That's a natural reaction. If you wait till, till your will kicks in, the fly may have come in and did what he's going to do and then leave. <laughs> Just think about it. Think about it. Now, now what this is what uh, uh, Matthew says here. Then Jesus was led in the spirit by the spirit into the wilderness and to be tested by who? The devil. Now, whose will was it that he be tested? God's will. Now Remember, Jesus has two what? Natures. He has a divine nature and he has the human nature. So the nature, the nature that we're going to be tested was the what? 
human nature. But he could not sin. God could not sin. Jesus can't, couldn't sin. He didn't have a sinful nature. He had a human body he lived in with a human nature, but that the, the, the Adamic nature he did not have. How do we get the Adamic nature? When Adam sinned, but Jesus was born of a woman, how did how did he miss that nature? Supernatural birth. Through what? Supernatural birth. He was a by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, right? And not a lot of people don't see that. But Jesus was put in the womb of Mary by the Holy Spirit, and he was born sinless. Yes. But he had a human nature. But he did not have the all that stuff that Adam transmitted to you and I. Right. Right? But he couldn't be tempted. As I was already said this morning. He was tempted in all ways as what? As we are, yet without sin. Jesus couldn't sin. If he wanted to sin, he couldn't sin. This is why if I had been put on this trip that the Holy Spirit sent Jesus on, I would have failed the first two today. Maybe fail the first day. Then the Spirit led him by the Spirit into the wilderness and tested him on the And when he had fasted uh, 40 days and 40 nights, that meant he went without what? Water, food, any kind of nourishment or substance of that type. So the first day, I got hungry. And the next day, I might have put up a pretty good fight and I would have Cause my, my human nature is yeah. running things here. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe by the third day, I just gave up. Mm -hmm. I robbed the first person I came by mm -hmm. to get me something to eat. I took something. Oh, yeah. I stole something. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm talking about here. How your human nature is out of control mm -hmm. without God being the ultimate purpose of you doing something. Yeah. Your will. It's ultimate. It is the prime mover at the top of the soul, mind, mind, will, mind, soul, and emotions. Emotions. Let someone say something to you and you go, you get upset. First thing that happens is your nature kicks in as to how you're going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, you ain't talking about no will here. Your emotions run in things. Am I right? They run in things. And as soon as it's finished, then you feel sorry that I said that, that I've done that, I, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have went over there, and I should have did that, I should have it's, it's actually too late in that respect to fix that. But there is a, uh, Jesus said, come bold into the throne of grace and you might receive help in a time of need. So God does forgive you for those actions of the flesh. Thank you, Lord. But every time he forgives you, he expects you to grow. Yeah. And not do that yeah. same thing over yeah. and over yeah. and over yeah. again. Yeah. There's some, yeah. some, you should learn something from that that experience. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Jesus, for his fast of 40 days, of 40, how long do you think he could have lasted, uh, Miss Diane? Three or four days. Three or four days <laughs> at the most. <laughs> well, do you, do you get hungry? Yeah, yeah. Do you think you could have made three days of seven? Yeah, I would have made a week. You, you could have made a week, you think? Yeah. yeah. Some people can do a, a seven day fast, but after that thing get a little shaken. Yeah. Got a gut got a growling. Yeah, and, and your mind is see all the hamburgers and hot dogs and french fries and chicken legs and, and, and uh, the last meal you ate. You see all that. And so yeah. that's, a, that's what's driving you now. Uh, to, a, to a place somewhere. And, but in other words, getting back to the, to the story here, is that Jesus said, 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he what? He hungry. Mm -hmm. So naturally, his human nature hungered. His human nature wanted to have substance and food. After 40 days. Say this again. It was, it was uh, after 40 days. So the first 39 days he wasn't hungry, but Satan knew on the 40th day he became hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. so that's when he came to it, Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. But to others it may be on, on three days or four days or five days. But to Christ it was 40 days. Yeah. And uh, he saw he was 
And there's something else that happened too, uh, Jay, I think this is important, is that Satan was, uh, was the one to tempt Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And he watched Jesus these 40 days. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he watches yeah. you yeah. and watches me. Yeah. I will one day, right. two days, yeah. or three days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Testing yeah. you. you Testing you. Yeah. And so finally on that fourth day, Christ, uh, uh, Jake, the old Satan said, well, I think I got it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Four days. Yeah. 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 Test his will. There you go. So I got it. Mm -hmm. And so he walked up to him and said, and the tempter came to him, verse 3, mm -hmm. and said, if, he, yeah. if thou be uh, yeah. the son of God, yeah. Yeah. he put that if there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that doubt there to to yeah. register, I don't. I, I, I hope you believe who you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're a child of God. Yeah. Where is it? You go to church every yeah. Sunday, yeah. and you sing in the choir. Yeah. And you a deacon. Yeah. And you go act like this. Yeah. This is how he he maneuvers and manipulates doubt and thoughts in your mind, and actually have you thinking that you ain't. I don't. I, I don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. He wants to keep you confused. Yeah. And therefore, when God asks you to do something, uh, when you need to do something for God, you can't do it because you, your will is so messed up. Yeah. Now, that night that Jesus, that, uh, he asked Jesus, uh, not my will, but thy will be done. So that clearly points out that Jesus had a will, yeah. a human will and a divine will. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do allow my will to become what? Your will. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the scriptures teach us over a period of time we should have more of God's will, will in our lives yes, living out those things that Christ desires us to live out in the spirit mm -hmm. in the will of God Amen. Will. will I can't do anything uh, I can do some things but out of reaction out of reflection things like that but to do the will of God it takes the Holy Spirit leading and guide you into all truth. Mm -hmm. Because you can do something and really think that God, God is behind it. Mm -hmm. Have you? Have you ever done something like that? I said, I know God got me. And then mm -hmm. through scriptures, through some, some reading or preaching or teaching, boy, I, I was wrong. I thought I was right. You see? And then the Holy Spirit brings to you that you were wrong. What you should do? Repent. Mm -hmm. And get it right. That's why the Holy Spirit is a, a great teacher yeah. and a great comforter in his teaching. Uh, we were here Friday, I believe, <laughs> and we were talking about something about the will of God. To do the will of God, you need to be under the, actually under the, the, the leading of the Spirit of Christ. You can't do the will of God unless God leads you to do his will. You can't naturally do the will of God because the will of God isn't in you. It may be there in the, in the person of the Holy Spirit, but you can't do it in yourself. Now what do I mean by that? You can't do it in yourself. You can't take your humanness and make your and make the divine will work. The divine, divine will has to work on its own. He has to be the one to lead you and guide you. You don't lead and guide the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lead and guides you. Yeah, and that's a process that goes on a long, long time. Yeah. A long, long time. Once you become a child of God, then he begins to lead and to guide you into all truth. He will take those things that are mine and make it real unto you. And also he'll be your what? The comforter. Mm -hmm. While you're learning and being trained in God's will. Mm -hmm. No one acted, all right, say for instance, Paul. He was stopped on the Damascus Road by God, right? By Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said, hard to kill against the priest. Mm -hmm. uh, but he sent him down to Ananias' house mm -hmm. and he laid hands on him. He received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then Paul began to grow. If you read the epistles, Paul began to grow and mature in the things of Christ. I didn't have any Jesus in me when I got before I got saved. You didn't have any Jesus in you before you got saved. Only thing you had in you was the old damned nature. And the old damned nature was running your life. 
And if we're not careful, the old devil nature now can kick in and ruin some things in your life. Just so we should lie on the spirit to lead and to guide us and so that we can do what? Do God's will. There's something always coming up to challenge your, your relationship Amen. with Christ. Amen. I have, have something this morning happen. My son is in the hospital and uh, Satan knows that. Mm -hmm. So he wants to create all habit he, he possibly can mm -hmm. to disrupt everything. Mm -hmm. And I saw it this morning. Mm -hmm. If you don't under his, his under, under Christ's authority, you can actually blow up. Mm -hmm. Blow off. And create situation that uh, damage your relationship with Jesus Christ, and also damage your relationship with, with others. Yeah. Doing God's will. Yeah, you have a human will, and you have a you have a divine will. The thing is, making sure we are in divine will as much as possible, because it's a learning experience. You're not in God's will all the time. The time when you're outside of God's will. But we outside of God's will, God has a way of showing you how to get back in his will and tell you that you're out of my will. Yep. That's where the teaching and leading and the guiding of the spirit comes in. It's Jesus said, well, when I leave you guys, I'm going to send you what? Another person just like me. And not all we, we, we be with you, he be where? In you. So communication with the spirit is so important for teaching, for learning, for maneuvering, for making decisions. The spirit is there to do that, to lead and to guide and to teach. Teach me that's something that you didn't previously know. The, te the teacher gives it to you and then you, you're aware of that. You, you ever experience that? Some days you get up, you may learn something that Christ has taught you, a revelation he's given you. You didn't have it the previous day, you didn't have it that, that, that evening, but you had it on, and then you can see Christ more clearly mm -hmm. because of the teaching of the Holy Spirit, yeah. of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and see, it, it, if the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, the Spirit also leads us and guides us around the pitfalls and, and, and wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, I, I've experienced this, that when a situation happened, God ordained it to happen to teach. It wouldn't happen. Because actually the enemy don't want you to know what? Anything. He wants to keep you dumb. He wants to keep you in an old cardinal nature, old cardinal mind, so that when God, God does call on you, you don't even hear. But Jesus uh, stayed with him. Look what he says here. But he answered and said, it is written. I think it's in Deuteronomy. Man shall not live by what? Everywhere. So if you if you if you just running from you just running for iron bread, you you're in trouble. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean I mean I said bread, I mean ma ma bread. materialistic things. Yeah, yeah, bread. Yeah. If you if you rather eat mm -hmm. than pray, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You rather right. find a drink mm -hmm. or a good TV program that you like and entertain mm -hmm. you. Entertain your mind. Uh, well, you eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. If you eat from there, uh, you can only produce what death. Mm -hmm. Death is the only thing that that you have to offer anybody. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Look at some of these TV programs. Death is yeah. only offer, yeah. mm -hmm. and a dollar sign mm -hmm. is before everything. Mm -hmm. The love of money is the root of all evil. evil. He said money was evil, but the love no. of it. Yeah. Yeah. If you love money, mm. um, you you bear, I don't think you do anything that pleases God mm -hmm. until you transfer your affections mm -hmm. and loyalty to Him. Right. If you got money, then He'll teach you how to deal with your with your money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're hungry, uh, He'll feed you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. One more time, He says, "Then the devil take them up and see." You see this? The devil did what? Mm -hmm. A prayer the devil has. Uh, powers, powers to move things mm -hmm. and to maneuver things mm -hmm. up to the Holy City. Mm -hmm. Jesus was out, I think, in a desert somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, going through this fast, but the, he took him there. Mm -hmm. My friends, uh, 
loved loved ones, don't ever doubt the power of Satan. You see him everywhere. I was looking at TV and I was so surprised. This this teacher, not sure about maybe twenty two. I bet she said I've been teaching here for two years, and uh, we were standing for a national anthem. But the little boy back here, he's not going to stand because he is in rebellion against the national anthem or something like that. I said, what, what, what is that? Mm. And then she said she got before the little girl and she said, can you count these potatoes? The girl said, I don't like potatoes. Mm. What kind of answer is that? Mm. But all she asked you to do was to count the potatoes. Then asked you, did you like the potatoes or not? Just count the potatoes. <laughs> you see how the TV is really, and the, and the media is really twisting and perverting the normal things that we think into something that's is, is just impossible to even know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. Now, what the reason for that, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Count the potatoes, Earl. I don't like potatoes. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> you can't count the potatoes because you don't like them. Like them. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm talking about. Gotcha. And you see it everywhere. And um, there's a thing called counsel count, count, count culture. And you should um, take a look at it because that's what's going on here. And yeah. it's a, it invaded our churches and places that we worship, well, counter culture. And they're trying to get rid of it. You, if you steal something, you just took it because you need it. Mm -hmm. You ain't sold it, you just took it. Mm -hmm. There's no laws, no rules, and no regulations about anything. If you, if, if that's what you feel, then that's what you feel. Yeah. See, the, 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 the Satan, is, God allowed him, and God is the one that allows him to do anything he does, God allows him to do it. So we as believers, we are to stay with the Spirit of Christ and with the Word of God so we'll know how to handle ourselves in all those situations. You're going to lose friends. you lose family and relatives. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes people stay with you just because just of what you got. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes. Sure. Sometimes yeah. stay with you. You ain't got nothing, then they move on. True. Well, they find true. somewhere else to roost. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. True. The devil taking him up to a seedly high city, sitting on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If, the, yeah. if you be the son of God, cast thyself down. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And uh, he shall give the angels charge concerning thee and thy hand they shall bear thee up. At least at any time if that's your foot of the stone. And Jesus said, It is written, thou shalt not tempt, not shall not put the Lord thy God to test. You don't test Jesus. Nope. But there are many people out here in the pulpit in services where they are testing him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That he will do this and he will do that. Yeah. And God ain't got nothing to do with it. Mm -mm. No, no, no. God gonna bless you. Mm -hmm. You send that thousand dollars, God bless you. The world say he'll bless you. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Doing the will of God. Will of God is working and maneuvering mm -hmm. and allowing God through the Holy Spirit to lead you mm -hmm. and to guide you. Yes, Lord. My spirit will lead you and guide God you into all oh, truth. truth. Yes. You got to remember that. I think Thank it's in the 15th chapter of, uh, 14th chapter of uh, John. I, I, I said another, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I need comfort. I need, mm. help me make a decision, mm -hmm. Jesus. Well, I got the spirit in me, but I ain't got the word. The spirit can't lead me nowhere <laughs> until I get the word in me. Yeah. Right? right? The word and the spirit work together. Once you read this and study this and practice this, then the Spirit can lead you and guide you by what? By the Word. Because if he, if, if he doesn't have the Word to guide you by, what is he going to guide you by? T tell you, how can he guide you without the Word? He can't guide you. And there are a lot of people that know the Word, but they don't have the Spirit. And said they're trying to teach and lead people by the word, but the spirit isn't in them. Mm -hmm. Nigger thing was a prime example, right? Mm -hmm. A one that had the word, knew the word, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, 
didn't do the word, but when it came down to living a life that exemplified Christ, they didn't have it. That's why Jesus said, Nicodemus, you what? You must be born again before you can see. Before you can do my will, do God's will, you have to be born again. The day when Paul had that straw, no people on the basket road, God stopped him and gave him the spirit, and he stopped it all of a sudden and began to do God's will. That's my story this morning, sister, brother. To do God's will, you have to be what? In the spirit. And you have to also know the word. Or in, in some way, studying the word. Because there are times when you get somewhere and it's, and you need to know something, the Spirit says. This morning, for instance, I was looking at this and I said, well, folks, you're tempted and uh, you don't know what to do. And it carried me straight my head. The Spirit said, call, call Corinthians 10, 13. Mm -hmm. Earl's quoted earlier. There are no temptation taking you that that, uh, that you give I think it has to do with giving up. The God will make a way for you to what? Uh, to escape. Ten thirteen, turn it quickly for me. That's what I'm talking about when you're talking about this and I know it happened to you many times that you sitting somewhere and thinking, what am I going to do? And then a scripture a passage of scripture will come. Mm -hmm. Or two or three passages. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to lean to your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Well would it happen to depend on the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you, no, don't lean on your understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your with your heart, and He will lead and guide you into all truth. Ten thirteen, I believe it is. Oh, yeah. We talked about this other week over here. Ten thirteen. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Let's see what we got here. Then there have no temptation. See, now Jesus was tempted by the devil, right? Mm -hmm. And we are what? Tempted by him. Mm -hmm. But God is the is, is sovereign over every temptation. Mm -hmm. What you may fall prone to, I, I won't. And what I may fall prone to, you won't. So every temptation in our lives is a little unique just for me. Your, your temptation is not like my temptation. We're all children of God, and God knows, knows us in and out. Mm -hmm. Knows our, our being, knows who we are deep down inside. Knows exactly who we are, and knows exactly how far we can go with any temptation. That's what I'm saying. Same temptation to tempt my wife, he doesn't use it on me. Same temptation, she okay. tempted, he doesn't use it on her. He used the temptation to, to help her to grow, as opposed to how the temptation help me to grow. See here? Have no temptation take, taken you, but such as common to man, but God is faithful and will not permit you to be tempted above that which you were able, but with the temptation also make a way for you to what? That you may be able to what? Bear it. What you're going through is not what I'm going through. What she's going through is not what you're going through. But God is sovereign over that particular thing that you're going through. He is growing you and maturing, and, uh, maturing you in his own particular way. Each child, each, every time we have, we have children, and each time our children are different. So we have to make sure that we're doing the right thing with that child to help him to grow. One child may need more discipline, another don't. Mm -hmm. Another may be rewarded, one don't. It's always about him growing and, 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 and maturing us as individuals in his garden. Growing us. Growing us. And I thank God for that. Because uh, we were going to the hospital this morning and Claudia said, well, she was praying. Asked the Lord to help me out because she knew I was in a little, little stress from him being in there. And uh, she said, help him the morning of Jesus because he needs it. I didn't think I needed it, but the Spirit revealed to her that I need And I, when I came back down the highway by myself, I said, I really needed that. Yeah. Yeah. I really needed that. Yeah. Sometimes you don't think you need certain things, mm -hmm. but God has particular people in the situation yeah. that are praying for you Amen. In, Amen. in his will. That's what's so wonderful about it. God is good. 
And each of us has, are individuals to God. Mm -hmm. We're not a, we are, we're a group in such a worship, mm -hmm. but as God grows us, he has to grow us individually. Because yeah. all of us are different. All of us are unique. All of us have said things in us that God needs to tend to. Yeah. All of us can't, are not the same. If all of us are the same, then we'd be speaking the same, looking the same, walking the same, talking the same, and all of us would be just one big whatever. But we're not. We're all different. God made us different to grow his children according to his purpose. I thank God for that. Amen. Remember, God's will and your will. You got a will, but mm -hmm. y'all parallel it with God's will. Is, is my will your will, Jesus? Mm -hmm. How do you know? Go to the book. And if it, if you can't go to the book, or don't have, if it's not clear on that, call someone that you can trust or you know is going to give you the, the proper answer. Amen. Not just going to go along with you because you are their friend, but going to tell you the truth. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You Amen. need people who who, wants, who stand with Jesus mm -hmm. on right. this, and then one day you may have, that person, same person, may have to come to you. Mm -hmm. You gave them some good advice, and they have to come to you for some advice. Mm -hmm. That's what the right. children, that's what family, are all about. We can't make it through this Christian journey all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. There are many Christians who are in churches who are all by themselves. Mm -hmm. They are group, mm -hmm. thousands of them, but they're all by themselves. Nobody has anything to do with anybody else because I'm about myself. I don't want to get involved with your pain. I don't want to get involved with your suffering. I don't want to get involved with your whatever you're involved with. I don't want it. I got enough on me. That's what I'm saying. But you give it to Jesus. He's a hairy little carrier. Yes, and a hairy little bearer, isn't it? Yes, yes, Amen. Praise the Lord. Any, any questions about man's will? Free will. I got a free will. Mm -hmm. Lisa, you got one too. Mm -hmm. uh, Tay, you got one. Free will. How many times have we, we made decisions based on what we want? Yeah, a lot of times. Yeah. I mean, yeah. God ain't in the picture. No way. We, we want it. Right. No way. That's right. It's just, uh, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. I, 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 know, I know God will give, but this is what I want. Mm -hmm. So. Right. Right then, you shut God down. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want any input from Him. Now you're getting all your input from who? From the wicked one. Yeah. And what Eve did. Mm -hmm. I really don't want to hear nothing but what you say here. And I'm going to give it to my husband. So always take, take those things in consideration. The will. Man's will. Yeah. I, I'll do this. Will you do this for me? Will? You will? What are you going to do? You will. You will have to do, do with some, some thinking too, I think. Mm -hmm. Once you think, your reaction is something different, but when you think, yeah, I'm going to do that. Mm. Oh. The emotion may be dictated to your will. Your anger may be dictating to your, to your will. Your frustration and anxiety may be dictating. But you have God in you. You have the spirit there to evaluate all that stuff as opposed to the flesh, as opposed to the spirit. And Jesus said, uh, be anxious for what? Nothing. Nothing. But in prayer and supplication. And maybe your request may be made known to the Lord. Don't be anxious. Amen. And see, what, and see now, if you don't know that scripture, the Holy Spirit, you may be saved, but he can't bring it to you because you don't have it. You don't know it. Right? Mm -hmm. He ain't gonna bring nothing to you that you don't have. Mm -hmm. That's why if they study to show yourself a proof, I work by night to train your mind very well. So when you when you're stressful, Amen. the spirit would pray said, be anxious for nothing. Just, yeah. just hold on here. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Just just hold on. Don't 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 don't, don't run away right. Don't run around like a horse with bridle off. Just just hold it. And if you stay, he will begin to minister to you. Yeah. You begin you minister, minister and your calmness and your anxiety begin to subside. Yes. Because the devil is, is always about disturbing your peace, disturbing you and having you thinking things that are, that, are, that are not even true. He wants you to think that way. Therefore, he has you completely under his control. Amen. Yes. Good to know the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And if you sin, you mess up, uh, Paul, John said, we have an advocate. 
things. I'm messed up here. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? You said, what am I going to do? The Spirit said, we have an advocate mm -hmm. with the Father. Mm -hmm. Jesus, man, how am I going to make it without Jesus? You can do all things through Jesus who comes. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. All those scriptures come to your mind when you yeah. know the word and, it's, and you have some mm -hmm. questions. The Spirit will bring them to you. I can do all things mm -hmm. through Christ who what? Strengthen me. Yeah. Yeah. Got to know that word. And, you, and I'll tell you, oh, be very careful who you watch it on TV. Yeah. These guys are about nothing. The mo most of them are about nothing. About drawing a crowd, getting money, and getting hung up on their teaching and their preaching. Amen. Amen? Any questions? About the will. You think about it, we have made many decisions about based on what we think. Yes, yes. But what scripture also teaches that what? We have the mind of Christ. Yeah. So we should rely on his thinking. Yeah. When we say mind of Christ, yeah. that simply means that the word. Yeah. We have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So if the mind is in you or in Christ Jesus, if the same mind was there at the temptation. The same mind was there at the woman of the world. The mind has a lot to do with your will. Once you get the right right information in your, in your in your mind, then you will carry out what the will, God's will. But wrong information, um, even though you might be a good little Christian, wrong information, uh, you still may be doing something contrary to God God's will, right? Contrary. Any question? Excuse me, lengthy, but uh, the will. If you do, do some study on on the will, and there's plenty of passage scripture. From Old Testament to New Testament, uh, do some research and you'll see what God think about the will. David had a will, right? God called him, but his his will was to uh, create a situation with Bathsheba, and uh, he will uh, instituted the murder of her husband, right? Man, it's got, look at Scripture. All of them has to do with the will. Yeah, it's in your mind, but. The will is the one who carries it out. Not thy will, but not my will, but thy will be done. Yeah, I have a will. I don't want to go to that cross. But that's my human will, but your will. And sometimes God approaches us with things that He wants done in our in our lives according to His will. But we we just gotta dance around it. And to the, get to the point that we stop, stop dancing and we look at it, we're still dancing. Because God is not going to carry you any further along this journey until you, first of all, pass this test. But people, uh, teachers cheat these days, they don't care. But years ago, huh, you ain't getting out of here, boy. Because I stayed in the second grade two years because I didn't get my homework. But nowadays, they pass you on just to get you out of that class. You got to pass uh, and, and, and leave high school and don't know, don't know nothing. Or they will pass you on. But God is like the same thing. If you're going to grow in God, he's teaching you, you got to learn this lesson. If you don't learn this lesson, you, how can you go forward? How can he mature you? How can you grow if you don't learn that your little lesson he's teaching you now? Communication is key to any relationship. Am I right? If you want a good relationship, you gotta communicate. You can. Right? Mm -hmm. If you your husband and your wife are not talking, you you got you got some problems here. Mm -hmm. If your children are not talking, you got some some issues. Commun communication problem. Mm -hmm. Right? I know, I got a couple at my house. Don't communicate, you will have problems. And you can't get an issue addressed unless there's what? Communication. communication. I didn't say text. Mm -hmm. I said communication. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't saying nothing about text. Texting, texting just will not make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Texting. Texting don't, I can't see your eyes. <laughs> I can't see your smile. I can't see your emotions. I can't see how you how you look at me. I can't see that. I need to communicate with you. 
your eyes, your hands, your emotions, your body movements, yes. all that has to do with communication. Yes. But all you do is send me a text. I don't know what. <laughs> we get it all the time. Mm -hmm. Communication. And so what Jesus did to break that, 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 that down is I give you what? Another comfort. Mm -hmm. And he what? He'll be with you. So we can communicate. Yeah. Through prayer, through medication, mm -hmm. meditation, through reading of the scriptures, we can communicate with who? With our Father. Yeah. We can't text him. Thank you. I, he, he probably could read the text, but I, he'd rather work through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you get a chance to communicate with people, that's the best time. If you don't want to hello or how you doing or fist bump, whatever, make some communication. Don't just walk by those people that you admire and you love and have no communication. Because that's what the devil wants. He wants to break communication between everything where there's nothing going on but chills and cold and reflexes that carry no emotion, no love, no concern. He, he loves that. You could be a good little Christian just as cold as iceberg. Right? Have love towards one another. Then the world what? Will know that you are my what? The disciples. Yeah. He always communicated that with us. He, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He said, have love to what? He did it. He said, well, ever two or three gather in my name, what? I'll be, I'll be there. Yeah. But you can gather and he not be there. Right? Mm -hmm. But he said, you, in my name, okay. I'll be there. Yeah. But you can gather in a setting yeah. where Christ is completely absent. Because we didn't invite him in. And we really don't want him in because we're talking about things that have nothing to do with the word of God. Amen. Excuse me. Praise the Lord. All right. Good. Let's get out of here then. We have communion too. Okay. Okay. Offering first and then communion. Okay. Chats all right. I love chats. But communication like we do when we come in to get the meetings up a little bit. If we want two or three words, it's a, it means a tremendous to all of us to communicate. I think that's God's will is that we communicate with one another. You want to have prayer on our journey for an offering? Thank you, Lord. Who sets high and look low. Mm -hmm. Who know all about us. Thank you, Lord. Our right and our wrong. Mm -hmm. But this morning, Father, I'm coming to you. Thank you, Lord. Because of this offering. Mm -hmm. You said give. Back what you give to thank us. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you for thank that. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, just bless each and every one of them. I say our voice. Let them know that you love them. Thank you, Jesus. And you adore them. Mm -hmm. Let us worship for you and worship you in spirit and truth. Now bless this money that we're about to receive. Let us use this for the upward growing of your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 The will, the will is tremendous. God's will, man's will, and satanic will. Make sure you know the word. Keep the word in you. Let the word lead and guide you. Don't let your emotions guide you. Don't let your feelings guide you. <clears throat> don't let the thoughts, don't let the devil get in your head. Because he comes and he make a nest. He lays. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, baby.